Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. The first Ninja Turtle movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, I've watched this thing at least a hundred times, if not more, since 1990. I've seen it so many times, now I start to notice little tiny details that I never noticed before. Like this dude, sitting down there next to the table. Have you ever noticed that? I've never noticed that until I made this video uh, trying to find screenshots of April. You know, it was awesome back then to see the turtles brought to life with such amazing suits. Um, and it was awesome to see April fully imagined as a real person. I always liked Judith Hogue's take on the, the turtles' best buddy. Uh, she was a smart aleck and didn't talk about, oh, I need to get my scoop, you know, like the whole time, like, geez louise. Uh, she actually seemed like an actual person trying to learn how to live her life now that it's filled with giant ninja turtles. It'd be pretty weird, don't you think? So when NECA announced that they were going to release a 1990 movie April, I was mostly excited. You know, I'm never really, really excited to buy an April toy because I prefer the mutants, you know, like, She's just kind of like a regular human, and I don't know. I, like, obviously she's a cool character, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I had to get this, this April action figure from my collection. I had to finish my movie collection. So I pre-ordered this thing on May 11th, 2000, and, or, yeah, 2021, and she just arrived today on August 14th, 2021. That's almost a three-month waiting period, and that is actually pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, that's pretty quick. You know, I'm used to waiting much longer than that to get my pre-orders. April was originally released as a pre-order on the NECA website uh, for $29.99. The same day that the pre-order window opened for April, uh, NECA also sold a limited edition or a signature edition of April with a yellow raincoat and a press badge signed by Judith Hogue for $99.99, I think it was. Now, some people thought that this was ludicrous, but uh, in all honesty, if you went to a convention and uh, you probably wanted to get like a signature from her in person, I bet it would, um, I, I would imagine that it would probably run you anywhere between $30 to $50. And yeah, you think you might think that's crazy, but that's how a lot of these actors and actresses make a living now. Like I remember even Adam West was like selling signatures for like a hundred bucks or something like that. Obviously, Judith Hogue is no Adam West. But, you know, I mean, she was in this Ninja Turtle movie. And in my opinion, she was my favorite out of all the live action Aprils. I didn't buy the signature edition because, you know, signatures aren't that important to me. Unless it's a, a Ghostbuster. <laughs> I think I paid 20 to $25 for this Winston, uh, or I'm sorry, for this Ernie Hudson signature. And uh, I had to buy a DVD to get Dan Aykroyd to sign this picture, so... I did spend some money on some signatures before. The biggest downfall for me is the raincoat. Like, that should have been in both. This is supposed to be the ultimate April figure. Include the raincoat, you know? Like, so, I think that NECA... I think that they did people wrong with that one. That should have been included in both, and the signature should have just been in the, uh... You know, the more expensive version. I mean, I, she does only wear this yellow raincoat for, like, probably, like, two minutes of screen time. But you know what they were doing there. It's like how they do Marvel movies nowadays. Or, like, you know, like how Scarlet Witch wore her comic uniform in the TV show. It's like they're too embarrassed to have her wear the yellow jumpsuit from the cartoon. So they were like, let's just put her in a yellow raincoat for a short period of time. Just to give that little nod to make all those little geeky children out there happy. <laughs> All right, so enough blabbering. Let's get on with the review here. Now, first, I just want to say that this packaging is awesome. You know, I didn't know that this was going to be a lenticular cover. I just thought it was going to be like a regular picture of, um, you know, TVs with April's face on them. So I really like, you know, turning this thing. You, you could see the snow or you could see April's face. That's pretty awesome. And I always loved that scene in the movie. You know, Shredder had such a cool TV setup. I always wanted that in my TV room. All these different TVs, you could watch different things on them at the same time, or you could watch the same thing and be like, oh, I want to watch it on the, uh, the Zenith, or I want to watch it on the Sony. <laughs> so it was pretty cool, you know. On the side here, you just have some pictures of the toy. Over here, you have, uh, you know, part of a picture that's actually on the inside of this cover so you can see the full picture when you open it up uh over here you have some more pictures april the toy and uh down the bottom here you know i do like this i think it's cool that they uh they list all the people that worked on this that way you could give some respect to the dudes and dudettes that worked on this toy that's all cool 
So when you open this up, you have this very nice shot of the toy right here. This looks pretty cool. Like, sometimes when you look at this and you, like, look... You can look past, like, the, the cuts and the articulation, like the hand. It almost looks like a real person until you get down here to the knees. And then you're like, what is going on there? It looks like she's got, like, mannequin legs or something. <laughs> but, uh, all right, this is what I'm talking about. You got, like, um, you got the same shot right here as you do over here. Um, the window is very big, and it, it works well to showcase the figure inside here. Um, I'm going to, in this review, I'm going to try to focus heavily on... The actual likeness of this toy compared to Judith Hogg. Um, you know, like, I think that face looks pretty good. But then when you actually look at that face, it doesn't look as good as this one. This one actually looks pretty decent. But, like I said, I'm going to get into that pretty uh, fully in a, a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to show, like, how this figure scales with the Ninja Turtles and Casey. Like, if it matches the actual movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, just have a lot of fun <laughs> so i'm gonna all right i'm gonna open this up i'll move her around make sure that none of the pieces are broken stuff like that and i'll get back to you in a minute so here she is out of the package and you know i think it looks pretty good you know i like i said i'm gonna go into like a very deep look or you know deep discussion on the, the likeness of this figure uh what i think is good and what i think is kind of a little off or something like that uh, i think sometimes these heads look a little better depending on which direction you're looking at them like if you're looking at them kind of from like if you're like looking down at them i think it looks more like her but if you look like from uh if you're looking like up at them uh there's just something off about it. I think maybe the size of the nose or something like that. But like I said, I will get into that a little more in a little bit. Um, and, and and like I said, you know, I, I've never been like, a, you know, I've never been like, oh, I need to get my April figure. I need to get an April figure. But like I said, I do think this is essential. Uh, this figure kind of does for me what like the live action Janine uh, Diamond Select figure kind of does for me too. <laughs> like it's... It's, you know, I mean, it's cool to have it, but it's just kind of like a, you know, lady in a dress, her skirt. And, you know, I'm just kind of here for the mutants and the monsters and stuff like that. And and these characters just kind of fill in the uh, the gaps. But like I said, I think this is cool. You know, if I was Judith, I would have, you know, you, you have to feel some kind of, uh, uh, you know, positive feeling or something like that, that people want toys of you and People want to have an action figure of you next to the Ninja Turtles set up in their display and stuff like that. So, like I said, this is pretty cool. As I said earlier, I always liked Judith Hogue's uh, portrayal of April in the movie. And I was always disappointed that she wasn't in uh, Secret of the Ooze. Um, so this April comes with two different heads. And I'm going to start off by talking about the head that I think is better than the other one. You know, I think that when you look at this head... Uh, you. I mean, that looks a lot like her. You know, that is that is that is a pretty close um, a likeness, I got to say. But like I said, it also depends on how you look at it. If you look at it from straight on like this, um, you know, it looks fine. Her nose matches pretty well. Um, and the proportions are, are really good. Um, what I think that they could have done a little differently that could have would have helped this a little bit um, is I think that maybe they could have made her like eyebrows a little darker and maybe her lips a little darker too. Like there's not enough contrast. So sometimes when you look at this toy, especially when you look at people's pictures on like the internet, um, because of the flash and everything like that, it kind of like, um, you know, whites out her face and like you kind of lose the eyebrows and the lips and stuff like that. So I think that they should have made them a little darker. It's not like she ever wears like, you know, heavy red lipstick or anything like that but her lips are you know they're a darker color than her skin and uh you know her, like i said her eyebrows are uh you know a lot darker than this she is a redhead but i think also what they should could have done um is like if you look at the hair here like it never gets like really dark but if if you look at these cards here you can see that like the shadow underneath that like um that curl or flip or whatever in the front there, it gets pretty dark. Even a lot of times in the movies, it is very dark there. So I think that they should have just, you know, I think that the hair looks like, you know, like it's one solid color and then you kind of have like a light highlight on top of that. I wish they would have went and did like a, you know, a darker shadow underneath the hair. Like maybe if this was like a three color hair thing. I think that they did a pretty decent job here with the hair. You know, it's, it's, 
I would imagine that as a toy maker, it would be very difficult to actually make hair uh, that's molded like this. Um, because sometimes, you know, it just looks, it can look like a Brillo pad or something like that. Like if you saw the, um, the Dana figure from the new, um, oh, what was it? The, uh, the Ghostbusters plasma series, like her head of hair was just like, you know, it looked like a giant, like eraser or something like that. Like it, right? Like it didn't, it didn't really look that much like hair. So I think that they did a pretty decent job here of trying to make this look like hair and, you know, capturing that same sort of style she has in the movie. You know, I think that this looks pretty good. So one thing that I do think is like a little off, like I said, it depends on how you look at it. Like this, you look at it dead on or um, from like from the top, it looks fine. But if sometimes if you like turn her to the side, like her nose, I think kind of sticks out a little too far. Like it's not like pointy or anything like that. It's just that the, like the bridge of the nose is raised off of her face a little too much um so it kind of uh doesn't look as much like it looks you know how she really looks like her nose i don't think kind of you know comes off of her face that much and it's you know it's like it's i understand that it's like a difficult thing to do like you are dealing with like a sh small toy so like you know, it's, I would imagine it's hard to sculpt these things, even if you're sculpting these things digitally, once you're actually producing them, you know, you have something that's just a little off, it kind of throws it a little bit. So, like I said, in general, if you look at it one direction, it looks fine, but if you look at it, like, from the, from the side, it, like I said, I think it's just raised a little too far, um, and if you look at, like, look at it from the bottom, it's like, you know, her nostrils look a little longer and stuff like that than they should be. And, you know, this is just, like I said, it, it's weird, you know, kind of getting this detailed about it. But, you know, if you want to talk about, like, um, uh, likeness and all that kind of stuff and, like, you know, really review this toy, I mean, you, you got to get into those kind of things. You know, that's just how it is. Um, her, her, like, the under chin area looks pretty decent on this one, but I, th I think it's a little off on the other one. So I'll get to that one. All right, so on to the second head, the smiling head. And like I said, this one I don't think uh, does as good of a job of looking like her. Um, just because, you know, they had to make some changes to the face here to get her to smile. You know, they I think they changed, like, some of the proportions or something like that. Like, even her eyes don't look um, as good as the first toy. And I think some of the problem is like the under chin area. You know, that sounds weird, but they kind of had the same problem with their um, their cartoon April. Where like, um, because of the under chin, they like, it's like they make it go straight underneath the chin so it doesn't look right. I don't know. It doesn't hang like it should. Like it should go up or something like that. But for whatever reason... I don't know. There's just something off about it. It's like the jawline is is kind of strange and doesn't necessarily look like her that much. Plus, um, some of the things like how far the nose is raised off the face is just, I think, maybe a little more noticeable on this one. And when you look at it straight on, it just kind of doesn't grab me the same as the other one. Like when I would look at the other face, you're like, oh, yeah, that's definitely her from the movie. But you look at this and you're kind of like, there's just something off about it. I don't know. It's, I don't know exactly what. And like I said, a lot of that is just because these things are made so small. And even if you're trying to get everything nice and perfect, if one thing is just off just slightly, since it's so small, it'll kind of throw the whole thing. So, you know, like I commend them for doing like such a good job with these and trying to get as close as they possibly could to them. But, uh, you know, I think that that first head looks a lot like it looks more like her in the movie than this second head does. And like, I mean, this the second head isn't even that much of like a, you know, a different face. It's like she's kind of smiling. You know, I think that they could have like picked maybe a more expressive look for her in the movie. I think maybe that, maybe that could have like fixed some of this problem. I think if you look at like the picture of her here where she does have the same face, you know, there's just something... That face looks a lot better. It does look like she has like a softer nose or something like that. More of like a button nose. I guess it's like the prototype or something like that. But um, yeah. So that picture I think looks a lot better. Even like the shadows in her hair and stuff like that. And even her eyebrows and her lips. Like I said before, 
there's more contrast there, so it kind of helps make it look more like her. It's not like washed out as much as like uh, this final toy is. Yeah, see, I just don't think that this one uh, looks as good as the other one for whatever reason. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> do, you th do you think one looks better over the other? Like this one, especially if you look, make it look up like this, it really kind of throws the whole thing off a little bit for me. Um, you know, so I don't even know how like they did this. I think that they maybe like scanned images of her and kind of sculpted it digitally. And, you know, even that can be like a little weird because like if it's too realistic, you start to have sort of that like uh, uncanny valley effect where you it's like, you know, I don't know. It's like watching like a super, it, it's like watching in like a, what the hell is that movie? Beowulf or something like that, where like they try to make them look so realistic, but they're just like soulless, lifeless shells of characters on the TV screen. So I'm not trying to be too negative or anything like that. You know, I'm just trying to give you my perspective on this toy and tell you what I think about it. Like I said, I do think it looks cool. I think they did a pretty good job here. Um, you know, it's just, I got to point out these things. It's my job as a YouTube reviewer. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, you know, the rest of the sculpt looks pretty awesome too. You know, it looks pretty good. Everything matches up really well with her outfit in the movie. Um, you know, that looks pretty good. So the other point of like controversy for this figure was when they announced this thing and they were showing it, people were like, what is with her knees? Those look very strange. And uh, yeah, I agree. Why would they do this? Why would they make her knees look like this? It's like, you know, she's just a regular character. She's not going to be doing any, like, amazing, like, karate moves or anything like that on your shelf. You're just going to be having her stand in there. So why do you necessarily need to have double-jointed knees, especially when they hinder the the look so much? It's like, you know, it's just like a little off-putting. Like I said, it's like mannequin legs or like, like a robot. It's like certain toys... Um, you can get away with this thing, especially if somebody's wearing like pants or something like that. You try to get away with it. But, you know, when you have this is supposed to be like, you know, like human legs. You can't do this. It, it, it looks weird. It's, it looks awkward and it kind of throws people off. You have like Casey here and Casey just has single jointed knees. Like he's supposed to be somebody who's fighting bad guys. And he's just got single jointed knees. And they actually look pretty, pretty decent. You know, I don't have any problems with these. Uh, I think they bend well and look good, but, you know, this is, this can be kind of strange when you, like, get a knee that looks like this. I, I've, if you've watched any of my videos before, you probably know that I'm not a huge fan of double-jointed elbows and knees because they always look kind of strange, you know, it's not natural. We don't have double-jointed knees and elbows, so when you start to have this kind of, um, look with your toys, it almost looks like they start to have, like, Play-Doh legs or something like that. And, I mean, you, you should, shouldn't do that. Like, up here, it, up here you can get away with it because she has a shirt on, right? And you can sort of pretend that, like, you know, some of these folds and stuff like that of this double-jointed um, uh, elbow are a part of her shirt, you know? But what's the one thing that everybody, like, kind of talks about that's weird about the original Casey Jones action figure? Well, that's his double-jointed knee, or elbows, um, because it looks kind of strange. So even on the brand new, like, unmasked Casey Jones, they got rid of these double-jointed elbows, and they kind of redesigned them a little bit. So, you know, in my opinion, like I said, I would be happy with single-jointed elbows and knees, especially on human characters that are, you know, just, uh, they're more like, uh, background characters. I mean, Casey's not a background character. He's going to be in the fight, but, you know, April's just going to be back there with her microphone. You know, in the film, she's got, like, her brooch or... I don't know, what is that? Is it, like, a, a button or something like that on the, around her neck? I don't know. I'm not privy to these girl things. My wife doesn't wear stuff like this. So, so uh, but, uh, yeah, you can see that on the toy here. That looks pretty good. Um, her articulation, you know, is well for what it is. You know, her hair spins around. She has no real um, upper torso articulation. She just kind of has, like, um, some movement in the waist. That's fine. But this, like, that's one of those things where it's like, you know, this looks better. It would look weird if she had like all these cuts in here for articulation. So why would they give her like super posable knees? That's seems a little off. Um, her shoulder, you know, you can, uh, hin it hinges out this direction. You can spin it all the way around. That's good. Like I said, you have double jointed elbows. That's pretty good. Both of them can swivel and they also have the hinge. 
Um, the wrist works well. And, you know, um, this figure works really well right out of the package. You know, I, I haven't had any um, fear of breaking anything. It's been working fairly well, so that's all good. So you can bend the wrists without worrying about breaking that, like, peg in there and stuff. Uh, you can swivel it all the way around. That's good. Um, down here, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of articulation she has in her hips because, I mean, you're not going to be able to do too much with her because this is like a, a soft rubber or a vinyl uh, skirt. So you're not going to be able to pose her to do too much. Um, like I said, your knees, you have double jointed knees. They can swivel and they both, you know, hinge. Um, all right, so it looks like I have a mark there. Oh, that's from the wire. That I thought maybe there was like a, a cut by the ankle, um, but it's not. That's from the wire that kept this in place in the package. So that's not cool. Um, you got the the uh, the ankles. You know, you have a hinge there, and you also have uh, rotation. So that's good. Or ankle rockers. So that's good. You know, you can get her in nice poses. Luckily, she has a stand included. You know, sometimes uh, figures with um, high heels. You know, it's tough to stand them. But in general. You know, this outfit looks pretty much just like it does in the film. You know, that looks all cool. Now, here's a big problem for me. Um, and I, I don't understand why NECA does this, because you would think that they would want, you know, everything to look pretty nice, you know. So I don't understand why, like, this can be molded in this color plastic. This could be molded in this color plastic. But the pegs here are molded in a brighter uh, plastic like that that looks like her skin color that looks like the same color as that um, why couldn't they mold them in this color because look at that like as soon as I move them and bent these knees they ripped it's like she's got like running like holes in the back of her stocking and her knees that's just kind of strange same thing down here with the ankles like I wish that they would stop doing that like that's that's my biggest complaint with NECA toys. You know, I think they do an amazing job. I think they always look pretty awesome. You know, I'm always like wowed and stuff like that when I pull the figures out of the package and I'm like, you know, setting them up on my shelf and stuff like that. But then as soon as you start to move them, you're like, oh, it's flaking. That, you know, that's, that's not cool. So I wish that they would fix that problem. Uh, other than that though, like I think that the colors of this look pretty good. You know, it looks, it looks pretty awesome. Here's a pretty cool detail on this toy. She's wearing a thumb ring. Now this is like something I never really noticed in the movie. I never noticed her wearing a thumb ring, but there it is. So for accessories, you got some pretty cool stuff. Like you have all these boxes of frozen pizza. That's pretty awesome. You know, Josh, Josh frozen pizzas. That's pretty cool. Smellios. Like, I like that. That is such a nice uh, attention to... Well, it's not an attention to detail because these never actually appear in the in the movie. Like, I was trying to look for... You know, I was looking through all the scenes when they're in her apartment trying to find pizza boxes. Can you find any? Could not find any of them. You know, you see pizza on the table, but... You know, so they had to make this up a little bit. Uh, and I think it's fine. You know, I think that the, the styles they used for the pizzas look really good. Man, those turtles eat a lot of pizza, you know, like it's cool because it's like, you know, these would be the circular mini pizzas. And then you can tell that like these boxes here would be like your square pieces. It's funny because like, you know, the square, I always, I always think of square pizza as like being like the cheaper pizza. But like, man, like my kids love it. They eat it all the time. Here she has a Channel 3 microphone, although I don't think it's called Channel 3 in the movie. It says 3 WTRL. I think that's what it says there. Um, now this always bugged me as a kid. I was always like, why isn't it channel six? What happened to channel six? But in the long run, does it really matter? No. This looks pretty cool. Um, it has a wire. The wire is like a, a, a metal wire. So you can actually like wrap this around and stuff like that. So that's pretty good too. Um, of course you see this microphone in the movie whenever she's busting the chief of police's chops. She has two gripping hands, and uh, from what I can see here, she can grip the microphone with both her right and left gripping hands. She comes with one of Raphael's size, and mine was bent in the package, so that's kind of lame, but whatever. Uh, and this thing she can hold in both her right gripping hands, too. It's pretty much the same size as the microphone, so it works well. Not like it's going to do her any good anyways. I mean, they kick it out of her hand as soon as she has it. 
this side is actually different than the uh, the regular side that came with uh, uh, my uh, my other Raphaels. You know, it's a little longer and a lot more pointy. Next up, you have April's purse, and this looks pretty cool too. You know, this is a pretty cool looking style. You know, it kind of reminds me of like uh, in the '90s how everybody still wanted to be like hippies or something like that. It's it's like she should have like a hacky sack and or stuff like that in here. So I tried to see in the movie, you know, what the pattern actually looks like. And uh, it's kind of difficult to, you know, see this thing, I think, Un unless I missed a shot where, like, you know, you saw it in plain sight. Uh, but you can see that, like, diamond pattern. Um, so, you know, they did a pretty good job. It looks like the color is probably a little darker than this actual toy. But, I mean, same thing with her outfit, I think, in the movie. Um, it is kind of tough to say because that movie in general is just a, a very dark looking movie. Like... Like, I always have to brighten up all my screenshots before I show them in this video because they are just, it's really hard to see much of anything. Um, this does fit on her shoulder pretty well. You know, it looks, it looks pretty nice. It might be, I don't know if maybe I would say it could be a little too big. Um, I don't know. It doesn't maybe look as big as this in the film when she's wailing on the foot soldiers. Um, if you want her to hold it, it's kind of difficult to, like, set it up so that it would actually look like she could, she's, like, trying to whack one of them with it. Um, you could maybe try to, like, wrap it around a little bit or do something to try to make it, give her, like, a tighter grip on it so that she holds it a little closer to herself. Up next, she comes with a stand, which is good because, like I said earlier, um, figures with high heels can be a nightmare, <laughs> you know, like trying to get them to stand and look right, you know, can be tough. Um, I've been having an okay job or like I've been having an okay time getting her to, to stand straight up. And like, this is kind of like a bumpy tabletop too. So it might be a little easier on like my wooden shelf. Um, I don't always like where using stands because it like makes them like taller than they should be and stuff. And like, I don't know, it just doesn't look as nice when they're like standing on top of the things next to each other. So I'll try to do my best to get her to stand next to the Ninja Turtles without this. But you know, for people who want this and like stands, you know, here you go. This is, uh, this looks pretty good. April comes with six different hands and I think that they're all good hands. You know, you should be able to get a lot of nice poses out of these. Uh, like I showed you, she has two gripping hands, one on the right and one on the left. Uh, the hands can hold both of her accessories, so that's good. Then you kind of have like these more like um, these open palm hands or I don't know if you call them like sort of like reaching hands. Um, so, you know, those are always really good for posing too. You can get like nice expressions and stuff like that. Then her one hand on the right is a fist. So you can have her uh, punch some guys in the head if you want to. And then her other hand is a pointing finger. So she could be like, hey, no more BS. You tell me the truth of what's going on here, right? You know, I, you know, and then I'm thinking about it in these hands. What they should have given her is like a pipe or something like that. Like when she's like up in the, uh, the rafters or whatever in the sewer and Mikey is like, you know, knocking foot soldiers back into her and she can pop them in the head. That was a cool part in the movie. Like they should have given her a pole or something like that, that she could have done that. Just knocking guys right out. If you look at April next to Michelangelo in the movie, uh, you can kind of see that like the top of his head lines up to about her eye level. So how does this figure scale with the, the other, the Ninja Turtle toys? Uh, pretty well, actually. I mean, that looks, that looks pretty exact. You know, that, that looks pretty perfect. And uh, this is how she looks next to Casey Jones. Um, and here she is next to Casey Jones. Um, I think that looks about right. Like if you were looking at this and you're like thinking like the top of her head is underneath that curl, that kind of lines up with, um, with Casey's eye level. I think that's, that's pretty close to how it looks in the film. So I think this, uh, works rather, I think it scales really well in this line. So here she is next to pretty much everybody that, I think this is everybody I have in this toy line. Um, the only thing that's not included here is a couple foot soldiers in the shadow master shredder, super shredder that I have. Um, and as you can see, this line is friggin' awesome. Like this is, 
this is one of the most beautiful lines. <laughs> this is this is one of the most amazing movie toy lines I've ever seen. Like the attention to detail is exquisite. You know, it's just it looks fantastic. Um, uh, like I said uh, earlier, I do think that when you look at all of these guys next to each other, that if they would have given her a darker uh, a darker hair color, you know, for those shadows. I think that would have helped her out a lot. Like, if you look at all the other characters in this line, uh, there's a lot of dark colors across everybody. And um, I feel like her face is just a little too bright next to the, you know, the rest of the line. But, you know, maybe that's just me. What do you think? The stand makes her a little taller, but not that much. You know, it still looks pretty good next to the, the guys. Like I said, on my shelf, I'm going to try to pose her without it just because it's, like, it's, a, it's a visual thing for me. She may start to like tip a little bit with uh, because of her ankles. You know, they're I wouldn't say they're loose, but they're not super, super tight. You know, they're they're like mixed. But like I said, she can possibly start to fall over on you. You know, all in all, I'm really glad that I picked this up. Like I said, uh, April is not like one of my favorite toys to pick up. I never look at a brand new turtle line and think, wow, I can't wait to get April in that line. You know, lots of times I skip her. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately but i wasn't gonna skip this one because i had to finish you know this set you know this is one of the coolest ninja turtle sets of all time and hopefully the uh, the danny loot crate isn't too far around the corner uh unmasked casey is already out and we know that uh hamato yoshi and oroko saki are coming soon so that's all awesome and then after that like what's left you know, there's nothing else that I, I really want from the 1990 movie that I can think of. You know, I'm perfectly happy. The only thing that I would want is I just want more foot soldiers. You know, I love the foot soldiers in this line. And I think you could set up like a huge, awesome display with the turtles fighting and everything like that. Oh, you know what? Tatsu. I forgot. You know, you need Tatsu. But unfortunately, they haven't had any luck getting that guy, which is you know, such a bummer because Tatsu was such an integral role in that movie, you know, especially when he's killing teenagers. <laughs> but after Tatsu, you know, that's it. I really don't need the, uh, this part was really awkward when I watched it with my parents, Tupac. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think and have a good one.